investigation into now the news with Gary Libertor and meteorologist Eric Gage good morning everyone and thank you for joining us I'm Gary Libertor and I'm storm tracker too, meteorologist Eric Gage and what a glorious day we had yesterday that was beautiful beautiful weather for any uh, summertime activities like the uh, Herkimer County Fair mm -hmm. the final day uh, of the uh, what the truck events now today we'll see a start relatively quiet but We'll see the chance of an isolated shower storm later on. So let's take a look at what's going on outside right now. First off, yet yeah, again, another foggy start to your day. Uh, fog reported in Oneonta. We can see it right here on our Hartwick College camera right now. And uh, visibility across the state near zero miles in Hamilton, a five mile visibility in Rome, one mile visibility up in Saranac Lake. And those temperatures. Are sitting in the 50s right now. In a live look at the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar, we're seeing a lot of light green noise here, but something we can pick out in the noise are these rain showers moving through the North Country at this point. And we can see that this has produced some rainfall in Old Forge. The road's looking a bit wet up there as we take a live look at Main Street. In the next 12 hours, again, we got sunshine uh, expected today. This is not expected to be a washout, but we could see an isolated shower or storm later on. So, although you'll bring your sunglasses to work today, keep that umbrella handy just in case, uh, with temperatures also climbing into the low 80s. So, we got a nice warm day today, chance of an isolated shower or storm. We'll talk about those rain chances tomorrow, plus how the weekend is trending in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. And don't forget the Storm Tracker 2 forecast is never more than 10 minutes away each morning. Rescue crews rushed to the scene of a house fire in Kirk. The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Good morning. Welcome back. The time now is 512, getting you set to head out door this morning on your Munson commute cast. First off, a live look at downtown Utica right now. It's not a Quite so foggy start compared to yesterday, but again, that fog took a little bit to set in the Utica area. It was starting to develop along the Mohawk River and then uh, headed farther to the south. But uh, based off of the satellite feeds coming in, there is still fog in the Utica Rome area, uh, but the locations are not completely widespread. So patchy fog this morning. And a look at the traffic flow data coming in from the traffic tracker right now. Again, no accidents to report. Uh, any planned road closures or any planned uh, delays with the roads, again, you can head to our website, WKTV.com, for a full list. Throughout the week, I'll be showcasing one or two of them uh, that will be taking place across the area. Uh, but again, this morning, you might run into some patchy fog. Temperatures starting out in the 50s. Uh, we'll see sunshine by the mid to late morning and an overall relatively dry start, but we could see an isolated shower or storm this afternoon and this evening. We'll talk about the locations have the best chance of seeing rain that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. Less than a week after Tropical Storm Debbie ripped through the southeast, killing at least seven people, there's a new storm brewing in the Atlantic, Tropical Storm Ernesto. Has been gaining strength and it's moving swiftly through the Caribbean, where it is expected to strengthen into a hurricane. Sherelle Hubbard has the latest on the storm and where it's headed. In Puerto Rico, people get in line at a gas station as they brace for Ernesto. I'm making the normal preparations, filling up with gas and buying a small jug of water. I don't think it'll be like Maria. The thing is that Maria brings back unpleasant memories, but I don't think it'll be as bad as Maria was. So we're preparing ourselves with the most essential things. Forecasters warn Ernesto could reach hurricane strength early Wednesday when it tracks just north of the island, which is now under a tropical storm warning. The storm sustained winds increased from 20 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour over a nine hour period from Tuesday morning to Tuesday afternoon. And even if it's not a hurricane, you get scared that the power is going to go out with the kids. You don't know when it's going to come back, you know? That scares you. Meteorologists say Ernesto could undergo rapid intensification which happens when a storm's wind speeds increase by 35 miles per hour in 24 hours or less, fueled by warm ocean water and upper-level winds. 
Government officials in Puerto Rico are warning residents and tourists alike to take the storm seriously. My recommendation is that we all stay at home, except for those who are providing essential services in the public and private sectors. I'm Sherelle Hubbard reporting. The time right now is 5.15. From central New York's most dependable weather team, here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good Wednesday morning, everyone. We are starting out the day mainly dry, aside for those of you in the uh, Old Forge Web area as a shower has rolled through. Before we get to that forecast, let's head back to our map again, a map we've seen all too often because the number has increased once more. Uh, we have now have an official report of a uh, confirmed tornado up in Clinton County. Uh, so this is... Uh, well to the north, of course, and this brings the total number up to 28. So 28 confirmed tornadoes across the uh, New York State area in the year of 2024. So this year just continues to bring more and more tornadoes. A live look at downtown Utica right now. Not so much in terms of fog here locally, but there is fog creeping in parts of the Utica Rome area as well as areas in the southern valleys. Officially 58, technically muggy and the sunrise still going a bit later on, but the sunset is going to slowly inch closer to that pre uh, 8 p.m. sunset as we head into the uh, second half of August. A live look at the York for Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar. Again, we're tracking a shower north of the Mohawk Valley, heading south. Those of you in northern Atlantic County uh, will likely see a shower or storm, mainly a shower. These look to not produce anything more than uh, uh, just rain at this point uh, as it continues south into the Mohawk Valley. And the next dozen hours favor mainly uh, sunshine and clouds today. Again, can't run an isolated shower or storm, but overall the trend favors temperatures in the upper 70s to low 80s. Now, we mentioned yesterday high pressure was keeping things quiet, but now today we have a trough extended from a low pressure. Basically, this low pressure is uh, not entirely circular, a ripple in the atmosphere pushing south, and that's what's causing those isolated showers here locally. And in our skycast, we can see them forming this afternoon. Sunshine to start. Isolated showers and storms, best chance for seeing a shower uh, generally west of Little Falls, or east, I should say, of Little Falls, uh, heading in down towards Cooperstown, maybe parts of Worcester, close to Oneonta. Same thing tonight. Clear skies, isolated shower, storm tomorrow. I think this one have a bit more of a westward push, uh, but the highest chance for rainfall both days are uh, j uh, east of Herkimer, Little Falls, central Herkimer County. Uh, that's where the highest chances are expected. Uh, but again, isolated shower and storm today and tomorrow. Beautiful weather expected for your Friday. And again, Saturday and Sunday looking a bit rainy with scattered showers and storms both days and temperatures in the 70s. Gary? Eric, thanks. A beloved local preschool is abruptly closing, leaving... The News with Gary Libertor and meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this half hour. I'm Gary Libertor. And I'm Storm Tracker 2, meteorologist Eric Gage. And with the WKTV Career Fair today from 9 to 2, hopefully during that period of time, it'll be good weather. Yeah, I'm thinking we're looking at more so sun than rain. These showers will be hit or miss today. We're not talking about a washout, but again, the risk is there, so I want to emphasize to keep that umbrella handy, yeah. but grab those sunglasses today. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see plenty of sunshine. Let's take a look what's going on out there this morning. Now, although we're seeing sunshine later on this morning, it's a foggy start in some spots. For example, we just saw the tower cam as well as uh, we take a live look in Oneonta where it's somewhat of a foggy start. And there are locations of reduced visibility all across the state. One mile visibility in Hamilton, two miles in Rome, uh, one mile in Glens Falls, zero miles up in Saranac Lake. And aside from the fog, it's a dry start for most of the area. Temperatures in the 50s. However, we're tracking a rain shower moving through the north country. It's actually heading south, uh, past through Boonville, 
It will be approaching Runson in Ohio shortly, then Trenton in Russia. And uh, this shower will be lasting roughly 10, 15 minutes. This will not be a long lasting event, but enough to uh, put some raindrops on your car. In fact, you can see the uh, dampness on the, uh, the streets in Old Forge early this morning. So, again, next 12 hours, dry start aside from an isolated shower. Same thing this afternoon sunshine, isolated shower, storm highs in the low 80s. We'll talk about what we can expect weather wise for tomorrow, <clears throat> plus. The uh, preview of the weekend in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. A study by Oneida County on flood mitigation along Oriskany Creek has singled out several areas for improvement. One of them is an old abandoned railroad bridge in Kirkland. That's where our own Luke Radel went to examine how old infrastructure along the waterway could be a danger to nearby residents in more ways than one. Now, you might not be able to tell, but from where I'm standing here in Kirkland, used to be railroad tracks. It's all pretty overgrown now, including all the way down there, where on the other side of that bush, there's a bridge. Years ago, snowmobiles used to snowmobile across this to get to the other side, and bicycles used to ride. Not anymore. How long ago could bicycles ride on there? 20 years ago. The railroad bridge just downstream of Main Street was abandoned in the 1950s, left to rot and decay. Now it's being recommended for removal. A study done by Oneida County shows the bridge poses a flood risk threat to surrounding properties, including the nearby American Legion Hall. The commander of that post, Clayton Bellows, showed me the overgrown pathway to get to the bridge. It's a trail he knows all too well growing up in nearby Clark Mills. He told me that he spent time with his friends fishing in Oriskany Creek. We always used to be down here. We'd buy a pizza, and uh, we'd sit down here, whether it be raining or whatever, and uh, we'd eat pizza and fish. And uh, you don't see too much of that anymore because it's overwhelmed right now by the trees, and they're supposed to clean a lot of this up, but uh, hopefully they do. Not only does the bridge pose a potential flood risk, but also a danger to anyone who attempts to cross it, which is why Bellows says the town is pushing for its removal. The town is, wants it taken down, to protect people because it's not fit to walking. Now, a public hearing is scheduled for Thursday to discuss that flood mitigation study, which recommends the removal of underutilized infrastructure like this bridge here in the Oriskany Creek. Reporting from Kirkland, I'm Luke Radel with News Channel 2. Anyone living in the Van Horns. Good Wednesday morning, everyone. We are taking a look at our photo of the day today, and this one is a submission, a first submission for the town of Unadilla. Uh, we have a smoky sunset. How about this for the first shot of Unadilla, taken by Jerry? Uh, beautiful photo right there of the smoky sunsets with the wildfire smoke out in the distance, getting that hazy reddish sun. And uh, if you want to put your town on the map, if you feel that your area is not represented enough on News Channel 2 at sunrise with our photos of the day, you can be that change. Submit your photo to the link right there on top of your screen, and I'll be sure to try my best to fit all the local areas, uh, towns, and uh, cities into our uh, photos of the day. So again, a big uh, thank you to Jerry for submitting this photo. Well, we're tracking an isolated shower north of the valley early this morning. It's shifting south. We'll keep a close eye on this one, plus what we can expect for the rest of the day rain-wise in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. Under fire about his military record, the Democrats picked for New York's most dependable weather team. Here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning. Welcome back. We got another foggy start here in central New York with some of you waking up to a brief shower. Before we get to that forecast, though, I want to uh, emphasize that there was an update on this map we've seen all too often. The confirmed New York State tornadoes, up to 28 now. And I also want to clarify, of course, I said Clinton County in the past half hour. Why I said Clinton County, I don't know. Ulster County was the confirmed tornado uh, a few days ago, and then in a confirmed tornado up in St. Lawrence County was reported uh, just in the uh, over the weekend on Sunday. So that brings our total count to 28, which of course is still record setting, but we're just adding to that total. So this uh, is color coded. You can see the tornadoes based off of the month. I think August, a bit more sporadic. July, just a sweep down the center of the state. 
and then a random tornado in June and in February. A live look at the traffic camera overlooking the arterial. We're noticing clear skies here locally, but you head out to the Mohawk River across from downtown Utica. That's where some low-lying clouds are starting to form. And you can see here temperatures in the 50s with fog reported in Rome. Dew point also 58, which is the uh, culprit of these uh, foggy conditions. And a live look at the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar tracking a rain shower moving down through northern Etta County and northern Herkimer County. In fact, I'm going to zoom in on this right here and see how that shower is trending. Uh, and this is moving through Ohio right now, heading into Trenton within, I would say, the next 5 to 10 minutes, Newport 10 to 15 minutes, Whitestown and Utica between, I would say, uh, 20, 25 minutes. But this is also weakening, too, as it's heading down into the valley. And so besides these isolated showers here and there, today's actually not too bad. Some opportunity for sunshine and temperatures in the 70s. And this... These isolated showers are caused by this dip in that trough from a low pressure out northeast of our area. And we can see on our skycast that the fog burns off, sunshine late this morning, early this afternoon, and then isolated showers possible uh, by this evening. But notice the greatest extent of them will likely be east of Little Falls. And same story for tomorrow. Carbon copy, although a slight westward push by tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. The main thing is we'll see plenty of opportunity for sunshine, but just keep that umbrella handy for today and tomorrow. Following that, we got a beautiful day expected for Friday, but then the weekend turns a bit unsettled with scattered showers and storms Saturday and Sunday. These look to be a lot more in terms of a washout uh, compared to Wednesday, uh, today and Thursday. And then rain showers will likely continue on and off as we head into the start of next week. Gary. Eric, thanks. Children who have two months. August 14th, 2024. Now, the news with Gary Libertor and meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on this Wednesday morning. I'm Gary Libertor. And I'm Storm Tracker 2 meteorologist Eric Gage. And you were mentioning quite foggy out there for some spots. Yeah, another foggy start to the day today. We have some locations, especially the southern valleys and in the Utica Rome area, too. Matter of fact, let's take a look at some of that fog right now. Uh, let's take a live look in Cooperstown. A little bit on the hazy side early this morning and uh, a bit more thick from our camera atop Hartwick College and Oneonta will of course show that uh, in a little bit. But around the state we got reduced visibility in Hamilton and in Rome with one mile visibility for both locations. It was near zero up in Saranac Lake earlier. It's since lifted slightly up to three miles now uh, and one mile out in Glens Falls. So that's the current situation with fog. It's actually reported in Rome and Hamilton right now, of course, with temperatures in the 50s. Now, unlike yesterday, it's not a completely dry start. Zooming in, we've got an isolated shower moving in through western, uh, approaching Rome shortly. It's entering the valley, so these showers are going to weaken. Uh, but there'll still be some remnant rain, light rain, uh, for maybe 10, 15 minutes maximum. In fact, this shower right here moving through Ohio will be heading into Newport, already in Russia right now, and then eventually Fairfield and Schuyler. And it's enough to make the roads a little bit damp. Here is what it looks like after those rain showers moved through Old Forge earlier on. And again, we got an isolated shower this morning. Most of us remain dry today. We'll, we could see an isolated shower and storm this afternoon and this evening, but we'll talk about the areas most likely to see that, plus what we can expect rain-wise for tomorrow and that weekend forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. And don't forget the Storm Tracker 2 forecast is never more than 10 minutes away. Rescue crews rush to the scene of a house fire in... The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Good morning. Welcome back. The time now is 6-12, getting you set to head out early this morning on the Munson Commute Cast. First off, a look at the traffic camera network uh, in the New Hartford area right now where road work is still taking place at this point. So again, you could encounter delays heading through Genesee Street. Uh, of course, those of you that drive this area frequently know the case, but again, road work is still uh, continuing across that area. 
Uh, traffic flow data coming in. No accidents to report of this morning. Things are going smoothly here in central New York early today. And uh, the only weather alert this morning, aside from an isolated shower north, is patchy fog. And we'll see that for the next few hours as that fog will gradually lift. Temperatures go from the 50s up into the upper 70s, near 80 degrees, uh, with an isolated shower or storm this afternoon and this evening. But we'll still have ample opportunity to see plenty of sunshine. We'll, of course, talk about uh, the rainfall chances, what areas have the best chance of seeing rain today in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. Less than a week after Tropical Storm Debbie ripped through the southeast, killing at least seven people, there's a new storm brewing in the Atlantic. Tropical storm Ernesto has been gaining strength and is moving swiftly through the Caribbean, where it is expected to strengthen into a hurricane. Sherelle Hubbard has the latest on the storm and where it's headed. In Puerto Rico, people get in line at a gas station as they brace for Ernesto. I'm making the normal preparations, filling up with gas and buying a small jug of water. I don't think it'll be like Maria. The thing is that Maria brings back unpleasant memories, but I don't think it'll be as bad as Maria was. So we're preparing ourselves with the most essential things. Forecasters warn Ernesto could reach hurricane strength early Wednesday when it tracks just north of the island, which is now under a tropical storm warning. The storm sustained winds increased from 20 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour over a nine hour period from Tuesday morning to Tuesday afternoon. And even if it's not a hurricane, you get scared that the power is going to go out with the kids. You don't know when it's going to come back, you know? That scares you. Meteorologists say Ernesto could undergo rapid intensification. Which happens when a storm's wind speeds increase by 35 miles per hour in 24 hours or less, fueled by warm ocean water and upper level winds. Government officials in Puerto Rico are warning residents and tourists alike to take the storm seriously. My recommendation is that we all stay at home, except for those who are providing essential services in the public and private sectors. I'm Sherelle Hubbard reporting. And the time right now is 6.15. Here to spoil your day. Tune in for the Storm Tracker 2 Commute Cast, brought to you by Munson. Visit Munson today and ignite curiosity and creativity. Visiting Munson and the Storm Tracker 2 Commute Cast, both free and both Utica's very own. Remember, all roads lead to Munson. The WKTV Tower Camp. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning and welcome back. We are tracking a foggy start to the day with temperatures in the 50s. Now, although we'll be seeing an isolated shower storm today, we'll actually see a good opportunity for sunshine. Before we get to that, though, again, an update on that tornado map for 2024. We are now up to 28 with the confirmation of a tornado up in St. Lawrence County right here. So three August tornadoes. A bunch of July tornadoes, one June and one in February, making up that total of 28. And a live look at downtown Utica right now. We are seeing some clouds out in the distance. And uh, overall, cloudy skies are Griffiths and Rome with temperatures in the upper 50s. A live look at the Earthful Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar. Again, we're, we're looking at a single shower. Moving into the Mohawk Valley area right now. In fact, zooming a little bit, uh, this is now through Newport, heading south into the Route 5 I 90 corridor momentarily as has just passed Ohio and, of course, heading down into the Utica area. We'll see that uh, in just a few minutes. Um, with the forecast today, we're talking about sunshine opportunities for the next. 12 or so hours. But in between those sunshine opportunities, we'll have a potential for an isolated shower or storm. And this is due to a trough extended from low pressure shifting south into uh, the New York State area. And as you can see here, this will fire up maybe one or two showers and storms. You can actually see the behavior of today on our skycast right now. Again, we'll see mainly sunny skies, a few passing clouds, but then as the afternoon approaches, these storms will start to fire up and they'll be hit or miss. So some spots will likely not see any rain at all today, but the highest chance of seeing rain will be generally east of Little Falls, Herkimer area 
as you extend out through the Mohawk Valley down into Fulton Montgomery County. Uh, same thing for uh, eastern Otsego County. Then by tonight, quiet conditions. Dry start tomorrow. Same story, a little slightly westward push. We could see an isolated shower storm uh, west or east of Utica heading through the Mohawk Valley. Well, areas to the east will likely remain quiet and dry. And so the next seven, seven days, we've got isolated showers and storms today and tomorrow. Opportunity for sunshine both days. Dry for Friday. And then we'll see showers and storms arrive as we approach the weekend with temperatures in the 70s. Gary? Eric, thanks. A beloved local preschool. Four. Now, the news with Gary Libertor and meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this half hour. I'm Gary Libertor. And I'm Storm Tracker 2 meteorologist Eric Gage. Boy, that shot of Cooperstown. It's a little eerie with all that fog. Yeah, a little eerie, a little foggy in a lot of spots here in central New York. Matter of fact, let's take a look at Cooperstown right now and see how uh, eerie it looks. And you're right, it, it looks a little, a little hazy in the uh, Cooperstown area right now. Uh, and it's not just Cooperstown seeing this fog. We are seeing it in some of the locations as well. Uh, zero mile visibility reported in Hamilton, one mile visibility in Rome, uh, five mile visibility up in Saranac Lake. And temperatures slowly climbing from the 50s this morning up into eventually the 70s. And a live look at the Artful Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar. Again, we're tracking a shower. An isolated one moving through the Utica area. Matter of fact, it's right on the doorstep. Should be arriving in the Deerfield area right now, Frankfurt, and then eventually most of Utica momentarily. And this produced some damp roads in Old Forge, but that's really about it. It's a brief shower. It'll come and go within the span of 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, we'll see a foggy, cloudy start this morning with some with plenty of opportunities for sun by the afternoon. But again. We could be seeing an isolated shower or storm this evening. And we'll talk about those rain and storm chances in that full forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. And don't forget the Storm Tracker 2 forecast is never more than 10 minutes away each morning. A study by Oneida County on flood mitigation along Oriskany Creek has singled out several areas for improvement. One of them is an old abandoned railroad bridge in Kirkland. That's where our own Luke Radel went to examine how old infrastructure along the waterway could be a danger to nearby residents in more ways than one. Now, you might not be able to tell, but from where I'm standing here in Kirkland, used to be railroad tracks. It's all pretty overgrown now, including all the way down there, where on the other side of that bush, there's a bridge. Years ago, snowmobiles used to snowmobile across this, get to the other side, and bicycles used to ride. Not anymore. How long ago could bicycles ride on there? 20 years ago. The railroad bridge, just downstream of Main Street, was abandoned in the 1950s, left to rot and decay. Now it's being recommended for removal. A study done by Oneida County shows the bridge poses a flood risk threat to surrounding properties, including the nearby American Legion Hall. The commander of that post, Clayton Bellows, showed me the overgrown pathway to get to the bridge. It's a trail he knows all too well growing up in nearby Clark Mills. He told me that he spent time with his friends fishing in Oriskany Creek. We always used to be down here. We'd buy a pizza, and uh, we'd sit down here, whether it be raining or whatever, and uh, we'd eat pizza and fish. And uh, you don't see too much of that anymore because it's overwhelmed right now by the trees, and they're supposed to clean a lot of this up, but uh, hopefully they do. Not only does the bridge pose a potential flood risk, but also a danger to anyone who attempts to cross it, which is why Bellows says the town is pushing for its removal. The town is, wants it taken down, to protect people because it's not fit to walking. Now, a public hearing is scheduled for Thursday to discuss that flood mitigation study, which recommends the removal of underutilized infrastructure like this bridge here in the Oriskany Creek. Reporting from Kirkland, I'm Luke Gradle with News Channel 2. Anyone living in the van. Good morning and welcome back. We are taking a look at our photo of the day today, and this one is submitted by our first Unadilla photo submitter, taken again in Unadilla of a smoky sunset by Jerry, uh, putting Unadilla on the map this morning. We got a gorgeous shot of that smoky sun in the distance. Uh, if you would like to submit a photo like this one or put your town on the map that you feel has been 
uh, undershown or has not been shown yet, send your photo to link right there on top of your screen. If it's uh, in the realm of photos that will showcase the beauty of our local area here in central New York, we'll be sure to try to share it uh, on uh, News Channel 2 at sunrise as well as uh, News Channel 2 at noon. Well, the skycast showing scattered uh, showers and storms east of our area, an isolated shower and storm later on today, but we actually are looking at one isolated shower moving through Utica early this morning, and we'll take a deeper look at that coming up in a few minutes, plus those rain chances later on today in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. Under fire about his military record, the Democrats picked for New York's most dependable weather team. Here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning. Welcome back. This Wednesday, starting out a little foggy, an isolated shower in some spots, too. And uh, overall, we'll be seeing sunshine this afternoon with, again, that potential for that shower. But before we get to that, though, let's talk about uh, the additional tornado, a confirmed tornado in St. Lawrence County, also another tornado uh, in Ulster County down to the south. So uh, bringing the total for 2024 to 28 confirmed tornadoes, still just shattering records. You can, of course, see these broken down by month with blue indicated August, red indicated by July, and then two tornadoes in June and in February. A live look at downtown Utica right now. We're seeing clouds starting to form, some low-lying clouds, patchy fog, with light rain reported in Rome as that shower I mentioned earlier is heading to the south. Still technically muggy, dew points upper 50s, and that humidity will remain on the lower side, but noticeable for today and into tomorrow. And a live look at your for battery storm tracker 2 live radar. Again, we got that rain shower moving through the region. And a matter of fact, this is actually just passing through Utica right now to the south uh, and approaching mainly the uh, West Frankfurt area near German Flats, right in between Route 5 and I-90 at this point. And we'll see this isolated shower for now. Plenty of opportunity for sunshine today, but we could see an isolated shower or storm later on. And that's due to this trough to the north, which is pushing south firing up a shower storm throughout the day today. But as take a look at our skycast, well, again, opportunity for dry weather for the start of today. Temperatures in the 70s. Then by the afternoon, we'll see a few of these fire up. The best chance for these showers and storms look to be generally uh, east of Little Falls and Herkimer today, heading into eastern uh, Otsego County. Uh, these will diminish, will dry out tonight, It'll be a dry start for the most part tomorrow morning. Then, by the afternoon, same story. Isolated shower storm firing up. This one slightly to the west. It could go as far uh, west as Utica and then pushing south before coming to an end. But following tomorrow, we'll see sunshine for Friday, a great end of the work week. However, by the weekend, looking a bit unsettled with uh, scattered showers and storms Saturday and Sunday with temperatures in the upper 70s. And those showers and storms will likely continue as we head into Monday and Tuesday of next week. But overall, nothing notable regarding high temperatures. It's looking very average for uh, August standards here in central New York. Gary? Eric, thanks. About 2.5 million people will go to the emergency room. For now, the news with Gary Libertor and meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on the CW11. I'm Gary Libertor. And I'm Storm Tracker 2, meteorologist Eric Gage. And pretty foggy out there, uh, maybe even a little dangerous for some, right? Yeah, we got near zero visibility in some spots. So, again, just budget some extra time if you're heading out early this morning in some locations. As a matter of fact, I'll show that in just a second. But first, let's take a look outside in Cooperstown where it's the fog's lifted a little bit, but there's still some spots in the higher elevations, well, slightly above the valleys in the southern valleys uh, where this is taking place uh, right now. Matter of fact, as you can see here, zero mile visibility in Hamilton, two mile visibility in Rome, and other locations. The fog is starting to lift, so we are right about in the bullseye here in central New York. Uh, 50s in Rome and Hamilton, of course, 53 in Saranac Lake, and 
The rain shower that was in Herkimer County early this morning has since weakened. There's still an isolated shower heading into Rome uh, within the span of the next, uh, I would say, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Old Forge Road's a bit damp, but they're drying out now as the sunshine is peeking out. And again, we'll have good opportunity for sunshine today, even though there is a risk for an isolated shower or storm. So you keep those sunglasses handy, but grab that umbrella just in case later on today, in case, unless you get uh, stuck underneath one of those isolated showers. But again, highs in the upper 70s, near 80 degrees. We'll talk about what areas most likely to see those rain showers today, plus the rain chances tomorrow into the weekend. Straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. Rescue crews rushed to the scene of a house fire in Kirkland last night. And while a new study by Oneida County on flood mitigation along Oriskany Creek, Oriskany Creek, that is, has revealed several areas for improvement. One of them is an old abandoned railroad bridge in Kirkland. That's where our own Luke Radel went to examine how old infrastructure along the waterway could be a danger to nearby residents in more ways than one. Now, you might not be able to tell, but from where I'm standing here in Kirkland, used to be railroad tracks. It's all pretty overgrown now, including all the way down there, where on the other side of that bush, there's a bridge. Years ago, snowmobiles used to snowmobile across this to get to the other side, and bicycles used to ride. Not anymore. How long ago could bicycles ride on there? 20 years ago. The railroad bridge just downstream of Main Street was abandoned in the 1950s, left to rot and decay. Now it's being recommended for removal. A study done by Oneida County shows the bridge poses a flood risk threat to surrounding properties, including the nearby American Legion Hall. The commander of that post, Clayton Bellows, showed me the overgrown pathway to get to the bridge. It's a trail he knows all too well growing up in nearby Clark Mills. He told me that he spent time with his friends fishing in Oriskany Creek. We always used to be down here. We'd buy a pizza and uh, we'd sit down here, whether it be raining or whatever, and uh, we'd eat pizza and fish. And uh, you don't see too much of that anymore because it's overwhelmed right now by the trees and they're supposed to clean a lot of this up, but uh, hopefully they do. Not only does the bridge pose a potential flood risk, but also a danger to anyone who attempts to cross it, which is why Bellows says the town is pushing for its removal. The town is, wants it taken down to protect people because it's not fit to walking. Now, a public hearing is scheduled for Thursday to discuss that flood mitigation study, which recommends the removal of underutilized infrastructure like this bridge here in the Oriskany Creek. Reporting from Kirkland, I'm Luke Gradle with News Channel 2. Anyone living in the... From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning. Welcome back. This Wednesday starting out a little foggy in some spots, mainly dry, isolated shower just moved through the uh, East Utica area earlier this morning. In fact, before we get to that forecast, though, I'll show you the updated map of tornadoes in New York State. Up to 28 now with a confirmation of another tornado up in St. Lawrence County on Sunday. So again, this active year continues record-setting tornadoes, shattering the previous record of 23 tornadoes in a year. Uh, but as you can see here, most of them were in July, sporadic in August, and then one in June, and then one in February. A live shot of downtown Utica right now. We are seeing a few clouds rolling through again, some showers out to the east. And temperatures starting out today in the 50s, but we have actually reached the 60 degree mark within the span of the, the past uh, few minutes with uh, humid conditions, dew point of 60. Radar right now mainly dry over the area, but we are tracking a shower moving through the region uh, at this point right now. We are seeing that moving through the uh, West Frankfurt area pushing through the I-90 corridor. For the next dozen hours favor mainly sunny skies, potential for an isolated shower or storm later on, and that's due to the fact that we got this trough arriving from the northwest, and this is going to shift south over the area, and it could fire up a shower and storm like it did earlier this morning in areas in the north country. And so on our skycast, we can see this morning patchy fog, mainly sunny skies, and then by the afternoon, that trough rolls through, pop up showers and storms here and there. Best shot for showers actually generally east of Little Falls, heading into full Montgomery County, uh, and then heading to the eastern part of Otsego County. 
Then we dry out again tonight and into early tomorrow morning. Patchy fog forms once more in some spots. Dry start, sunshine, then isolated shower and storm. This one looks to be a bit more west uh, compared to what we're seeing today. So, again, there's a chance for a shower storm both today and tomorrow. Keep that umbrella handy, but it's not expected to be a complete washout with sunshine uh, opportunities both days. Beautiful weather for Friday. And then as we head into the weekend, we'll see some showers and storms arriving Saturday and Sunday uh, with temperatures in the upper 70s. is live on location at the WKTV Career Fair at the Adirondack Bank Center in Utica. Eric, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Steve. I am live at the WKTV Job Fair. World's well, indoors. However, outdoors is not too bad. We've got some sunshine, temperatures in the 70s, and it's pretty dry. In fact, look at the radar right now. We've got dry conditions all across the region. And although it's dry for now, we can't roll an isolated shower or storm just yet as we head into this evening. Again, current temperatures are in the mid 70s 74 in Whitesboro, 75 Outer Lake, and 75 degrees in Cooperstown, with 80 degrees reported in Little Falls, the warmest part of the area so far. And our headlines as we head into this evening again, it's a mostly dry early afternoon, plenty of sunshine. I can't route an isolated shower or storm later on, and so we'll keep a close eye on the radar heading into this evening. But it's not expected to be a complete washout. Still plenty of opportunity for sun. And on top of that, we do expect a repeat of the weather tomorrow or today for tomorrow. So we'll be looking at that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. But again, today it's great weather. You can come on down to the WKTV job fair. We are live here again until the end of the hour. Uh, you can, we'll, of course, talk about that forecast for not only tomorrow, but also heading into the weekend. Maybe it could be a washout or not. And I'll, for now, I'll send it back to you, Steve. All right, Eric, thanks. And again, that career fair goes until 2 o'clock this afternoon. Well, the WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good afternoon. Welcome back, everyone. We are live at the WKTV Career Fair where uh, it's pretty packed right now. Again, the weather inside is pretty warm. Same thing outside. Uh, pretty pleasant to head out uh, today if you want to go and meet some local uh, companies that are offering their career opportunities. Now, as you can see here, the temperatures today are going to climb as high as 80 degrees. That might be the, the, the cap, maybe 81, 82 if we're lucky. Still lots of sunshine to keep those temperatures very warm today. Now, one thing to mention, too, is that we'll still be seeing these types of temperatures over the next few days. Let's take a look at those next few. You can see here 82 tomorrow, 84 the high Friday. Then we cool down a little bit as we end this Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with highs in the upper 70s. So uh, we're still looking at relatively average August temperatures here. No heat wave, no cool down. Uh, but the only thing that will change is the chance for rainfall. And so as we head into this afternoon, we'll still be dealing with rain shower chances, although low, an isolated shower or storm. As you can see here, rainfall chances primarily out in the areas east of, uh, of Little Falls, Herkimer. Still isolated shower could push to the west, but the highest chances, of course, are out to the east. Then, following this evening, rain chances diminish. It's quiet tonight. Clear skies, patchy fog returns, temperatures fall into the 50s. Tomorrow, a carbon copy of today. Patchy fog, dry start with afternoon sunshine. But again, there still could be a chance of an isolated shower or storm. A bit of a westward push tomorrow compared to today, so that rainfall chances increase slightly as you head over to the Utica area and farther to the east. But uh, again, these rainfall chances today are low. But it's going to be handy to grab that umbrella uh, just in case. 
Regardless, rain chances diminish for Friday. We got lots of sunshine, temperatures climbing into the upper 70s, eventually the low to mid 80s. So a beautiful day is expected for Friday. Well, how about that seven day forecast? Again, I mentioned those rain chances increasing heading into the weekend, and that will be the case. Saturday and Sunday looking a bit more like a washout compared to today and tomorrow. Uh, but there is silver lining. These rain showers coming through will push away tropical storm, eventually Hurricane Ernesto from reaching us, which is, uh, I guess, favorable versus seeing tropical light conditions here locally. So again, that's the next seven or so days. For now, I'll send it back to you, Steve, and we'll just we'll keep mingling around with uh, lots of folks here at the uh, career fair. All right, sounds good, Eric, and we'll check in with you again shortly. Well, still to come, the weather in this half hour, and for that, we go live to meteorologist Eric Gage, who's at the Adirondack Bank Center as the WKTV Career Fair rolls along. Good afternoon, Eric. Good afternoon, Steve. It's a nice sunny day here at the Yacht. Well, we're indoors, so we're not quite seeing the sunshine. However, if you're heading to the career fair today, it's looking absolutely fantastic weather-wise. But we are keeping a close eye on the radar. In fact, taking a look right now at the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar, a few isolated pop-up showers in areas out to the east in Hamilton County, in Fulton County, and just on the outside uh, of, uh, of Delaware County right now. So these showers are isolated. They're small. They're popping up here and there. But for now, here locally in Utica, things are looking dry. Temperatures again very comfortably in the mid 70s, although Little Falls, the warmest of the area, currently sitting at 82 degrees. In fact, the rest of the temperatures you can see 76 in Cooperstown, 76 in Earlville, and 74 degrees in Westmoreland. Again, our headlines mostly dry early afternoon. We're keeping a close eye on those showers I mentioned in the radar, uh, but following that, We'll see quiet conditions tonight and then potentially a repeat of the weather today for tomorrow. We'll talk about that and that full forecast coming up in a few minutes. But for now, I'll send it back to you, Steve. All right, Eric, thanks. And again, the job fair goes until 2 o'clock today. We'll see you in a few minutes, Eric. Other news for right now, Maryland. The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good afternoon and welcome back. Yes, we are still at the uh, WKTV Career Fair where, again, lots of folks coming in and out, interacting with all the local businesses, checking out the job opportunities. Again, it's a great opportunity if you uh, would like to come down and uh, take a look at all the opportunities here, not only in the Mohawk Valley, Utica area, uh, and the surrounding regions. But again, it's a great weather day to come out and do this. Temperatures started out in the 50s. We climbed into the 70s. We're still sitting in the mid 70s right now. Little Falls, the outlier, sitting at 82 degrees. Uh, but we'll expect to climb in as high as the low 80s by this afternoon. This weather will be very similar tomorrow uh, with the heat being not too hot. Uh, temperatures in the low 80s again by tomorrow. We'll cool down a little bit as we head into uh, Thursday or Saturday and Sunday uh, with highs only in the upper 70s. And so I mentioned earlier on, it's dry right now. In fact, sunny here in downtown Utica. Uh, but we're still keeping a close eye on a pop-up shower or storm, especially east of Utica, heading into the Mohawk Valley, Fulton, Montgomery counties. That's our area we're monitoring. In fact, you can see on a skycast right here, the areas in green, the highest chance of seeing those pop-up showers and storms. We've got a trough moving through, and this will stay in place for tomorrow as well. So we're expecting a carbon copy of today for tomorrow. But the one good news is, is that following this evening, weather does dry out. We're looking at quiet conditions tonight with overnight lows falling down into the 50s. Again, tomorrow, same story. Pop up shower and storm in the afternoon, morning dry, patchy fog in the morning, especially in those Southern Valley locations. And then tomorrow night, things will quiet down once more and we'll see plenty of sunshine for Friday and no rain chances expected. So, all those isolated shower chances today and tomorrow, long and gone as we approach Friday afternoon. In fact, you can see here, lots of sunshine temperatures in the 80s. By Friday evening. 
And so let's take a look at that seven day forecast. Again, as I mentioned, today, sunshine, isolated pop up shower storm east of our area. Then by tomorrow, carbon copies, same story, isolated shower and storm, mainly sunny skies, temperatures in the 80s. We're looking at still comfortable humidity. It's not too high, but also not refreshing. Uh, just around average for this time of year. Friday again, beautiful weather, but as we head into the weekend, things look a bit unsettled. Scattered showers and storms arrive Saturday and Sunday with highs in the 70s. Uh, but that's good news again. Silver lining, those showers and storms are going to push away tropical storm, eventually Hurricane Ernesto, uh, out to sea. We'll keep a close eye on that. Uh, that's, of course, a few days away, but for now, we'll talk about the beautiful weather again. Great to come out to the, uh, the fair today. Steve? All right, both the job fair and the Herkimer County Fair as well. So not anything but it is very fair weather. No, no pun intended. All right, thanks a lot, Eric. Well, a study by Oneida County on flood mitigation along Oriskany Creek has singled out several areas for improvement. One of them, an old abandoned railroad bridge in the town of Kirkland. That's where our Luke Radel went to examine how old infrastructure along the waterway could be a danger to nearby residents in more ways than one. Now, you might not be able to tell, but from where I'm standing here in Kirkland, used to be railroad tracks. It's all pretty overgrown now, including all the way down there, where on the other side of that bush, there's a bridge. Years ago, snowmobiles used to snowmobile across this to get to the other side, and bicycles used to ride. Not anymore. How long ago could bicycles ride on there? 20 years ago. The railroad bridge just downstream of Main Street was abandoned in the 1950s, left to rot and decay. Now it's being recommended for removal. A study done by Oneida County shows the bridge poses a flood risk threat to surrounding properties, including the nearby American Legion Hall. The commander of that post, Clayton Bellows, showed me the overgrown pathway to get to the bridge. It's a trail he knows all too well growing up in nearby Clark Mills. He told me that he spent time with his friends fishing in Oriskany Creek. We always used to be down here. We'd buy a pizza and uh, we'd sit down here, whether it be raining or whatever, and uh, we'd eat pizza and fish. And uh, you don't see too much of that anymore because it's overwhelmed right now by the trees and they're supposed to clean a lot of this up, but uh, hopefully they do. Not only does the bridge pose a potential flood risk, but also a danger to anyone who attempts to cross it, which is why Bello says the town is pushing for its removal. The town is, wants it taken down to protect people because it's not fit to walking. Now, a public hearing is scheduled for Thursday to discuss that flood mitigation study, which recommends the removal of underutilized infrastructure like this bridge here in the Oriskany Creek. Reporting from Kirkland, I'm Luke Radel with News Channel 2. All right, Luke, thanks. Well, space stay extended. The Starliner astronauts now might not. On August 23rd, Oneida County, the city of Rome, the Community Foundation, they all set up this fund following the tornado on July 16th. As of today, 553 applications have been approved for more than $1.45 million. The money can be used for insurance deductible assistance, tree removal, relocation assistance, and other needs. Applicants are eligible to get up to $5,000. The number to call if you need help is 315-798-5206. FEMA's disaster fund has been and Chief Meteorologist Bill Cardis. Tracking some showers, some thunderstorms today in the Mohawk Valley. Uh, we're continuing to keep an eye on these. We were looking at a couple of uh, stronger storms, some peace ties, hail that took place in the Mohawk Valley, Little Falls, Ohio, a couple of places reporting that. But at the current moment, these storms are weaker. They are moving in from the northeast tonight, and there's it uh, could be some potting on, on the roadways, but again, storms are weakening and they are mainly east of Utica. These are primarily in Herkimer County, Otsego County, and points east, not affecting Oneida or Madison County. Well, again, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. In fact, Rome, which hasn't, had, uh, hasn't seen the brunt of these storms, at least the ones that are out there now, are sitting at 80 degrees. It's humid, dew point 63. Our weather headlines, we're tracking some patchy fog tonight, some scattered storms tomorrow, and a generally unsettled weather pattern ahead, especially as we head into the weekend. Again, storms end this evening. Temperatures in the 70s. We'll see a few more of them pop up tomorrow. Got to look at the forecast coming up. Kristen, back to you. Several months after pleading guilty, a Utica man was... The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired.
From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's Chief Meteorologist Bill Curtis. Good evening. We're tracking a few scattered showers and thunderstorms, especially east of Utica. That's where all of the activity has been, or I should say most of the activity uh, throughout the course of the day. We did see a couple of showers and downpours in central Oneida County, but those have diminished. And again, our, our focus is now on what's happening uh, across the uh, areas east of Utica. Again, you can see some thunder, some lightning. It's a live look at the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 Doppler radar. A uh, real time lightning strike showing up here just north of Stratford. This is all moving south and west. So it does look like the Mohawk Valley is going to be getting hit again with some thunderstorms from Little Falls uh, to the east. It could even clip areas like Illion and Frankfurt. I think this is going to pass just to the uh, east of Utica as it tracks south and west. Again, thunder and lightning downpours. This also could instigate some minor flooding. There was a flood advisory in effect for uh, this area, southeastern Herkimer County, western uh, Montgomery County, uh, in effect earlier today. And depending on how long these storms last, we might see additional minor issues here. Live look at downtown Utica. Again, it looks nice in many areas. A temperature of 79. Uh, temperatures are in the 80s where it has not rained, but where it has rained, it's cooled off. Look at Little Falls and Dollsville in the 60s, but Westernville is sitting at 81 degrees, 75 in Norwich, 72 in Oneana and Cooperstown with 67. We're going to cut the lawn over the next couple of days. I think Friday is your best bet. You could do this early tomorrow, but we do have the chance for a thunder few thunderstorms in the afternoon. Saturday looks like a washout. Our MoCast is brought to you by Clinton Tractor. Weak disturbance in the atmosphere today, producing a couple of thunderstorms this afternoon. We'll see more of this tomorrow before this disturbance weekends, and then uh, the weather does look dry Friday. Tonight, storms come to an end. Overnight lows drop it into the upper 50s. Some patchy fog is possible. Thursday, sunshine. Temperatures climb into the upper 70s to low 80s. The chance of a pop-up shower or thunderstorm is expected in the afternoon. Much like today, some places get hit, some places don't. Tomorrow night, uh, skies clear out. Overnight lows drop down into the 50s. And Friday looks really nice. High pressure arrives, and it brings us sunshine and dry conditions. Also, warm weather. Highs on Friday in the low to mid 80s. Uh, Hurricane Ernesto looks to remain out to sea, uh, heading towards Bermuda as we head into the weekend. And the National Hurricane Center brings this storm east of the east coast. So, again, we'll continue to watch that. But at, this mo at the moment, no uh, concerns here. In the northeast. Mostly clear tonight, low 58 tomorrow. Partly sunny, scattered thunderstorms possible in the afternoon, 82 for the high. Storm Tracker 2, seven day forecast. Sunshine Friday, 84. Showers and thunderstorms expected over the weekend. Temperatures in the upper 70s and some cooler weather ahead, but generally nice. Sunshine Tuesday and Wednesday with highs in the mid 70s. All right, Bill, thank you. Again, no longer a tropical storm. Ernesto is now a hurricane, cutting a path across the Caribbean and pounding Puerto Rico just hours after delivering flash floods and wind damage to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Laura Aguirre reports on where the storm is heading next. Ernesto is now a Category 1 hurricane and gaining strength as it barrels through the Caribbean. The storm landed a powerful punch on the U.S. Virgin Islands Tuesday as a tropical storm. Its wide-reaching bands have been lashing Puerto Rico over the past several hours. As the center of the storm passed the U.S. territory about 175 miles to the northwest. Nearly a half a foot of rain has fallen so far across Puerto Rico, and meteorologists warn the storm surge could reach three feet with life-threatening swells and riptides. Multiple flash flood warnings were in effect throughout the day across Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Puerto Rico's governor mobilized the National Guard ahead of the storm, and crews worked to clear drainage canals, while some schools were converted into shelters. Many residents prepared by stocking up on food and water and topping off gas tanks. A good thing, since hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses are now without power across the islands. Much of Puerto Rico still grapples with an outdated electrical grid, and some areas are still under repair from Hurricane Maria's crippling blow in 2017. Ernesto will curve away from the Caribbean into Atlantic waters in the hours ahead, where it's expected to grow even stronger over open sea. It could reach Category 3 status before passing by Bermuda this weekend. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. 
A ballot measure in New York State is in court before the beef meteorologist Bill Curtis. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> they are tracking uh, some nice weather for the Herkimer County Fair tomorrow. Uh, could see an isolated storm or two. Temperatures will be in the upper 70s to near 80. This area, by the way, did get hit with some thunderstorms earlier today. Uh, so it's always wise to bring an umbrella. Make sure you have our Storm Tracker 2 weather app. You can scan this QR code if you don't have it already. It's a, a free and easy way to keep track of the weather uh, when you're on the go. Live look at the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 Doppler radar. More scattered showers and storms in the uh, eastern half of our area. Again, Herkimer County seen uh, a lot of this activity today. Uh, again, we're going to continue to track some storms here throughout the course of this evening, generally east of Utica. So in the Mohawk Valley, a uh, few storms, but uh, Oneida County, Madison County in the clear. So if you're going to be taking the, the dog out for a walk, just keep that in mind. Temperatures in the 70s. Tonight's featured dog is Nicholas from Marcy. And this is brought to you by Nye Automotive Group. We're tracking widespread storms as we head into the weekend. Look at the forecasts coming up. Chris, back to you. Great day to be on the links. Dozens of America never get caught on the course in bad weather. Get severe weather alerts right to your phone with the WKTV Storm Tracker Weather App, the only weather app on your phone powered locally by the WKTV Storm Tracker 2 team. When you're on the go, stay in the know. The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's Chief Meteorologist Bill Curtis. Good evening. We're continuing to track a few scattered thunderstorms east of Utica, impacting areas north of the Mohawk Valley. This is a live look at the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 Doppler radar. A lot of thunder and lightning with this storm in central Herkimer County. This is north of Salisbury. We'll put a storm track on this as it heads to the south and east, or I should say south and west, kind of an an unusual direction for storms, but it's based on the wind environment here. Fairfield 556, Cass Bridge 604, Herkimer 608, German Flats 611. These areas have already seen some thunderstorms uh, earlier this afternoon. It looks like these areas are going to get hit again. Some small hail is possible along with gusty winds at the moment. This is not under a severe thunderstorm warning, but still. Uh, gusty winds are possible. Remember, any severe storm has the ability of producing wind. And we have been seeing some of that take place today with some storms earlier this afternoon. This is the one that we're tracking in our area. And as we lose the heat of the sun, I do think that these storms are going to weaken uh, heading past sunset. So I don't think we'll be dealing with these tonight. Current temperature is 69 degrees in Cooperstown. A little bit cooler here where the rain has fallen. Tomorrow we do have a risk of a thunderstorm or two in the afternoon, but we also have the likelihood that wildfire smoke will return. We saw some of that yesterday, that haze in the air. The winds turn into the north, and that uh, will allow for some wildfire smoke that's in Canada to drop southward. So we could see a diminishing, we could see our air quality diminish tomorrow, especially late in the day. We might be dealing with this again on Friday. We'll keep you posted. Sky watchers checking in 77 in Clinton, Mike in New Hartford 78, Helen in Cassville 76. Jeff in Mohawk, where He's seen some rain, 65 westward with 72. A few scattered storms today with a weak disturbance of the atmosphere. This will be around tomorrow, producing more scattered storms. Tonight, overnight lows drop down into the 50s. Showers and storms end. We're expecting sunshine tomorrow with a chance of a pop-up storm. High temperatures are expected to climb into the low 80s. Tomorrow night, drying out down into the upper 50s. On Friday, the weather looks great. Sunshine, high pressure. It's going to allow for temperatures to climb into the mid-80s. Hurricane Ernesto forming today in the Atlantic. The steering currents will keep this storm out to sea. And we're not expecting any significant impact on the east coast aside from rip currents along the shore. But again, the National Hurricane Center's forecast keeps it safely east of our local area. Mostly clear tonight, 58 for the overnight low. Tomorrow, partly sunny skies, a chance of a thunderstorm, 82. Storm Tracker 2, seven day forecast, 84 Friday, beautiful day. Widespread storms over the weekend, close to a washout Saturday. Widespread storms Sunday, 78. Showers Monday, some cooler weather ahead with highs in the 70s Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be right back. With Chief Meteorologist Bill Cardis. Tracking a few thunderstorms today. These have been mainly east of Utica, and there's more coming for the Mohawk Valley. Take a look at this. 
Uh, areas like Little Falls, Ohio, seeing some pea sized hail along with some gusty winds. And uh, this one is really starting to intensify. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Actually, showing some signs that it might be producing some small hail. This is to the west of Stratford, dropping southward. This is Route 29A, and this is heading into the Mohawk Valley. Again, we'll keep an eye on that. Current temperature 78 degrees. It's humid outside, and we're going to see more thunderstorms tomorrow. Again, they're going to be scattered in nature. Not everybody gets them, uh, but some of us will. And as we head into the weekend, the weather becomes very active. We do get a break Friday, though. That looks to be a beautiful day across the area. This evening, the storms do come to an end. Temperatures in the 70s. But again, we're tracking the chance of more storms tomorrow. We'll look at the forecast is coming up. Chris, back to you. Several months after pleading guilty, a Utica man was sentenced for his. There's spoil your day. Tune in for the Storm Tracker 2 commute cast, brought to you by Munson. Visit Munson today and ignite curiosity and creativity. Visiting Munson and the Storm Tracker 2 commute cast, both free and both Utica's very own. Remember, all roads lead to Munson. The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's Chief Meteorologist Bill Curtis. Good evening. Tracking a few thunderstorms this afternoon across the Mohawk Valley. Check this out. This was in Little Falls from Jessica. Some small hail today. Uh, pea sized, it looks like, in that photo. And we also had some uh, wind damage in Dodgeville from, again, uh, storms that have moved through the area, mainly straight line uh, that we were dealing with here uh, throughout the course of the day. That picture, by the way, that I just showed you, that was from Sunday uh, over in uh, uh, Newport. Uh, as we look at the tower cam, we're going to go uh, move the tower cam to the uh, north here. I know the tower is going to get in the way for just a second, but I want to show you that we can spot this storm from our vantage point. Uh, and we get a better view of the radar. So I know that, again, the tower's in the way, but we're, what we're looking at here is this. This is towards the Little Falls. This cluster of thunderstorms is dropping south and east. It's producing some lightning. At the moment, it's not, it doesn't have a severe thunderstorm warning, but it, it could still produce some wind and some small hail. I'm going to step out of the way here and storm track this and show you where it's going as it continues to drop to the south and west. Uh, so this will be arriving in Middleville at 615, Herkimer 626, and German Flats at 629. Again, a lot of you dealing with storms in those areas earlier today, and it looks like more are on the way. Uh, that, by the way, should be the last of the storms for the most part as we head into this evening. Looking well, to cut the lawn, early tomorrow is better. Uh, we're expecting more storms in the afternoon. Friday, the weather looks great. On Saturday, not so much. Widespread storms are expected. Our mobcast is brought to you by Clinton Tractor. Wildfire smoke from Canada could impact our weather again tomorrow, could bring a minor change in the air quality. Unfortunately, I think we're going to be dealing with this more and more as we head into the next couple of weeks with the wildfire situation to the north and the prevailing jet stream looks like it's going to carry uh, uh, the winds in this direction. So we'll continue to keep you posted. Skywatcher is 77 in Clinton, 67 in Gray, 72 in Westford. Again, a few scattered storms out there tonight. We'll see more tomorrow as we have a disturbance in place. Tonight, the weather looks dry. Overnight lows drop down into the 50s. Tomorrow starts out dry, but then a couple of storms develop in the afternoon. Again, scattered in nature. Not everybody sees them. Tomorrow night, clear skies. Overnight lows in the 50s. A dry Friday and a nice day with high temperatures in the 80s. Hurricane Ernesto developed today in the tropics. It's expected to stay east of the Atlantic seaboard as we head into the weekend. Mostly clear tonight, low of 58. Tomorrow, sunshine followed by the chance of thunderstorms, 82 for the high. Storm Tracker 2, seven day forecast. Sunshine on Friday, 84. Scattered thunderstorms expected Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures in the upper 70s. Some cooler weather to follow Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We'll be right back. And new tonight, the roof of a multi-family home in Dulgeville was blown off in a storm this afternoon. Strong winds and hail blew through the area around 3 o'clock, and the village of Dulgeville was hit especially hard. Part of a roof on an apartment building at 37, 39, and 41 Elm Street blew off as the storm began. No one was injured, but about a dozen residents are displaced. Dulgeville Fire Chief Dave Jaquay said that about 20 trees are down throughout the village and Dulge Ave is closed from East State Street 
to 2nd Street while crews remove debris and downed wires. Several National Grid crews are in the village to repair damage to power lines. And we're getting new details to the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bill Cardis. Bill, we talked a little earlier on about that storm earlier today in Dalgeville. How strong do winds have to be to blow off a roof like that? Uh, looking at least 60 miles an hour, uh, yeah. that's enough where it starts to do some damage to the roof. You also get a lot of power, uh, power outages and also trees that came down. This was a scene on the radar earlier today, shortly after 3 o'clock. Yeah. This was a severe thunderstorm. Severe thunderstorm warned. It wasn't missed. It's always a reminder, too. When you get a severe thunderstorm warning, you're going to want to get inside. Uh, because even though they don't all produce tornadoes, just because uh, they don't produce tornadoes doesn't mean that they don't do damage. And a lot of them do. Uh, straight line wind damage uh, happened today from that severe thunderstorm. Live look at the Yorkfield Battery, Eastern Tracker 2 Doppler radar. It is quiet across the area. We got a nice quiet night ahead. And we're not dealing with wildfire smoke as much as we were last night. Current temperature 65 degrees, clear skies, calm winds. Tonight, much more comfortable. Uh, looking at uh, temperatures into the 50s. Tomorrow, heading to the Herkimer County Fair. We have the chance of an isolated storm. Uh, temperatures in the upper 70s to low 80s. I know Herkimer got hit a little bit harder today, too, especially with some of the rain. Hopefully, that's not going to be as much of the case tomorrow. Now, tonight, going to bed, overnight lows drop down into the mid-50s. Uh, we're tracking, again, the chance for some thunderstorms tomorrow, along with a pretty unsettled weekend ahead. Look at the forecast is coming up. Luke, back to you. Bill, thanks so much. Two months after... Welcome back. The Rome Victims Recovery Fund will stop taking applications on August 23rd. Oneida County, the City of Rome, and the Community Foundation set up the fund following the tornado on July 16th. As of today, 553 applications have been approved for more than $1.45 million. The money can be used for insurance deductible assistance, tree removal, relocation, and other needs. Applicants are eligible to get up to $5,000. The number to call is 315-798-5206, right there on your screen. Representatives for National... The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's Chief Meteorologist Bill Curtis. Good evening. We were tracking some storms earlier today that did produce some small hail. This picture from Little Falls from Jennifer. We could see a few more of these storms tomorrow. Uh, there is a small chance of them happening, especially uh, in the afternoon and evening. Live look at the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 Doppler radar. It is quiet across the region tonight. Uh, if you're looking to get the lawn cut the next couple of days, do offer some opportunities either early tomorrow or Friday. Friday actually looks to be the best day. Saturday, we've got some rain in the forecast. That is not looking great. Our MoCast is brought to you by uh, Clinton Tractor. We are tracking some wildfire smoke. Now, yesterday we had higher levels of smoke in our area. We had a little bit of a break today, but the wind direction favors an increase in wildfire smoke across our area. The air quality is expected to be affected, especially in the afternoon and evening. Looks like the smoke will work into the Adirondacks, so some thicker smoke to the east. This is not expected to be as thick as what we dealt with in June of 2023. That was a really bad smoke day. But still, if you suffer from sensitive, uh, if you're very sensitive to changes in air quality, uh, this is something you're going to want to consider here. The worst of this again arrives tomorrow afternoon and evening. Again, earlier today, those pop-up storms taking place. We've got a disturbance, a trough in our area. This is going to create a few more storms tomorrow. But again, things are looking pretty quiet tonight. Mostly clear overnight. Temperatures fall into the upper 50s. Some patchy fog is possible. We start out Thursday morning with sunshine and temperatures in the low 60s. Looks like a generally nice day tomorrow. Uh, high temperatures close to 80 degrees. And again, there's the chance for a few pop-up thunderstorms. They're going to be pretty random, and they don't last for very long. Tomorrow night, overnight lows drop down into the upper 50s. It looks beautiful on Friday. Lots of sunshine, dry throughout, and warmer. High temperatures in the mid-80s. Ernesto, Category 1 hurricane, sustained winds, 80 miles an hour. So a little bit stronger than it was earlier today. It's expected to become a major hurricane move out towards Bermuda. The long-range path, the five-day forecast on Monday, brings it 
east of Nova Scotia. So this looks to clear well east of the east coast. We'll keep, continue to keep an eye on it, but I think this could be more of a wave maker for uh, the eastern half of the uh, uh, U.S. Mostly clear skies tonight, low of 58. Tomorrow, sunshine, a few scattered storms, temperatures in the low 80s. Storm Tracker 2, seven day forecast. Thunderstorms are expected over the weekend. I think we're close to washout conditions on Saturday, 78. Slightly less activity on Sunday, but still wet, 78. Cooler Monday, showers 74 in the mid 70s, Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be right back. Family home in Dalgeville was blown off by a storm. Strong winds and hail blew through the area around 3 in the afternoon, and the village of Dalgeville was hit particularly hard. Part of a roof on an apartment building at 37, 39, and 41 Elm Street blew off. As the storm began, no one thankfully was injured, but about a dozen residents are displaced tonight. Dalgeville Fire Chief Dave Jekwe says that about 20 trees are down throughout the village, and Dalge Ave is closed from East State Street to 2nd Street while crews remove debris and down power wires. Several National Grave crews are on the scene tonight. Joining me here now for a first look at the forecast is Chief Meteorologist Bill Cardis. Bill, how strong do winds have to be to knock a roof off like that? Well, you're looking at severe winds, so yeah. that's at least 60 miles an hour. And we were seeing that on the radar here. This yeah. was a little bit after 3 o'clock. Uh, yeah. Severe thunderstorms are very capable of producing uh, straight line damaging winds, is what you, we saw in Dodgeville. And it's also a good reminder that when you get those warnings on your phone, get indoors if you're in that area. Uh, because, again, severe thunderstorms often produce damaging wind. We also had several reports of hail. Uh, especially east of Utica today in southern Herkimer County. Live look at the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 Doppler radar. It's quiet out there now. The weather looks quiet tonight, but we could see a couple of thunderstorms again tomorrow. Clear skies this evening, a current temperature of 63 degrees. We are cooling off. If you're heading to the Herkimer County Fair tomorrow, uh, also the chance of a thunderstorm. Temperatures in the upper 70s to low 80s. Again, not everybody gets wet tomorrow, but uh, some of us will. Overnight, you can leave the windows open. Temperatures look to fall into the mid 50s. We're tracking a few chances for storms ahead, along with a return of wildfire smoke from Canada. We'll look at the forecast coming up. Look back to you. Bill, thanks so much. The Rome Victim Recovery Fund will stop taking applications on August 23rd. Oneida County, the City of Rome, and the Community Foundation set up the fund following the tornado on July 16th. As of today, 553 applications have been approved for more than $1.45 million. The money can be used for insurance deductible assistance, tree removal, relocation assistance, and other needs. Applicants are eligible to receive up to $5,000 from the fund. The number to call if you are affected is 315-798-5206, right there on your screen. Representatives for National Grid. The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's Chief Meteorologist Bill Curtis. Good evening. Welcome back. We tracked a few thunderstorms earlier today. Not only did they produce wind damage in Dodgeville, but they also made some Small hail. This was taken in Little Falls by Jennifer, uh, Jessica. Rather, we might see a few more of these storms tomorrow. Uh, some gusty winds, some small hail is possible. Uh, and the timing of this will be in the afternoon, and the risk is general. Uh, it's hard to pick out exactly which areas could get hit because these storms end up developing randomly. Live look at the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 Doppler radar. Always quiet across the region. Looking to cut the lawn. I know we've been getting some pretty active weather. You have opportunities to cut the lawn over the next three days. I would go early tomorrow to avoid the, the storm chances. Friday looks great. Uh, start to finish, lots of sunshine. Saturday is a no. We're expecting a very wet Saturday. Widespread showers and storms. A mocast is brought to you by Clinton Tractor. Wildfire smoke from Canada is likely to return to central New York as we head into Thursday evening and Thursday night. There's been a lot of activity, a lot of wildfires well toward north and the wind direction is starting to carry some of this in. One reason why we were not dealing with this in July is because it's been, it was so hot. We had that southwest wind. Well, with the wind direction changing, that brings more opportunities to see wildfire smoke here so long as those fires continue, which again, at this point, looks like it's, it is going to continue at least for the next couple of days. 
Temperatures continue to cool off. 63 degrees at Griffiths and Rome. Again, we saw some of those scattered storms earlier today. A very weak disturbance is in place. That's what's creating a few pop-up storms. Tonight, the weather remains dry. Some patchy fog. Overnight lows drop down into the uh, upper 50s. Tomorrow, sunshine to start. The chance of a pop-up shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon. High temperatures climb into the low 80s. Tomorrow night, mostly clear skies. Overnight lows in the upper 50s. Friday looks like a really nice day. Sunshine dry throughout, warmer, with highs in the low to mid 80s. Some faded sunshine with that wildfire smoke. Hurricane Ernesto now up to uh, 80 mile an hour winds, making it a category one storm. This is likely to move towards Bermuda as you head into the weekend. The National Hurricane Center uh, brings the storm out to sea, passing east of Nova Scotia on Monday. So uh, those of us along the East Coast, nothing to worry about here. Mostly clear tonight, 58 for the overnight low. Tomorrow, partly sunny, scattered storms, 82 for the high. Storm Tracker 2 seven-day forecast. Mid-80s on Friday, mostly sunny. Widespread showers and storms Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures in the upper 70s. It's cooler next week with highs in the mid-70s. Showers Monday, sunshine Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be right back.